So in this Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree video, we check out what in my opinion are 10 of some of the best early game weapons you can get yourself to make yourself OP. Some of these weapons are tied to mini quests, some are just hidden in the open world waiting for you to find, others require you to take out a boss. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So in regards to me stating early is because there's a particular part in this DLC involving a tree which I don't want to spoil for people but if you know what I mean then you know what I mean. These are all obtained way way before that. So these weapons consist of some of the best new weapons in the game. Some are stupid easy to get while others depend on you completing short quests or beating bosses so let's check them out. So first up people we have a weapon I've actually barely seen anyone mention which is kind of understandable with the amount of weapons on offer from this DLC but I actually think people may be missing out not knowing about it. It's called the Spirit Sword. So this curved sword scales with that strength, dexterity and intelligence offering that magic attack power too. A very very unique weapon for unique play styles. Also the fact it's a curved sword uh, means it's a lot quicker with its attacks than many other weapon types which is a great thing for players with builds like mine. Now its unique skill is as cool as heck, it's called Rancor Slash and just bear witness to it guys, you spin around not only slashing foes but you also at the same time are summoning those spirits which chase down those foes. Pressing that unique skill button again with a follow up attack does it again with another unique attack. It's pretty pretty cool people what's not to love about it. So how do you get this? Well guys it's actually just laying around waiting to be picked up the poor little bastard. So from the cerulean coast west grace point guys follow this short path to where this weapon is hiding behind these rocks or graves and there you have it guys you have it. Next up guys we have the Starline Sword. So where do you even start with this brand new katana? So this is a weapon I myself as soon as I found I knew it was going to be a weapon I went to level up and use and it hasn't let me down yet. So the weapon itself scales with strength, dexterity and intelligence much like the last weapon we covered but man oh man this thing's unique attack is one of the best from this DLC. It's called the Ounces, I believe, Ounces Line of Stars, I believe that's pronounced, and consists of three attacks you can perform in a row, with the third basically allowing you to teleport jump, coming down on those foes. I mean, what is not to love about this one? Plus, it's a katana too, so yeah. So, where do you get this from? Well, guys, you have to take out what I call a mini boss, uh, found not too far from that last weapon actually. So from the Cerulean coast to West Grace, follow this quick path to where you'll find a few enemies sitting at the coast. That big guy at the back is your main aim as taking him out drops you this weapon. Next up guys we have another amazing weapon in the Dragon Hunter's Great Katana. Another weapon I actually thought about building around. So this one scales with strength and dexterity, uh, causes that blood loss build up and does indeed hit very hard. You ain't as agile using Great Katanas as you are with the standard katana and because I'm so used to using standard katanas I mean I just don't like feeling a little slower. But these do more damage as you would expect. This one's unique attack is called the Dragon Wound Slash and it looks fantastic. So how do you get this people? So from the pillar path grace when you first get here you will hear the cries of Igon. Upon speaking to him pushing down a little further south you will be invaded by the ancient dragon man. Upon defeating him you will then open up the dragon pit which is a little further down south to this fight. Now exploring this space and at the very bottom you will fight the ancient dragon man yet again and after defeating him 
you get this weapon. It's as simple as that. Okay, so always worth of a feature no matter how popular these are. They are Rolana's Twin Blades, a weapon you get from defeating Rolana Twin Moon Knight and using her Remembrance at Finger Reader within a round table to get them. So you basically get two for the first of one with these, with two unique attacks too. One scaling with faith and the other no doubt scaling with that intellect, but strength and dexterity scale this weapon too. So the unique attacks are called Moon and Fire Stance and how these work is by the wielder holding down that skill button and pressing either the light attack or the heavy attack to operate between these two incredible skills. I mean this is a weapon I'm sure everybody already knows about but I just couldn't keep it out of this list. And again, complete your way through Castle Ensis, defeat Rolana and get the Remembrance then cash in at the round table and unlock this weapon. Okay so next up guys we have two weapons that come from a similar path. They are the Sword of Light and the Sword of Darkness. Now we actually made a video guide on these which uh, I posted earlier today and how you obtain these weapons and I will link that down below in the video description. But basically how these obtained are is by you visiting one of three altars on the map, picking up a generic sword and taking it to one of the other two altars to infuse it with either light or darkness. So both these swords scale the same and have the same stats but offer different unique abilities. The Sword of Darkness offers the darkness skill where you put that sword above your head and do an amazing area of effect attack filling the area around you with that darkness. The Sword of Light basically offers the same kind of skill but with this it just fills the surrounding area with rays of light. Both very very cool weapons indeed. Now if you want to pick one or the other and know how you get these check out my guide again link down below. Okay, so next up guys, we have another weapon I do feel people are overlooking. They are the Death Knight's Twin Axes. Now I remember when I found a boss who used these and I thought, man oh man, if these weapons drop from this boss, I hope they do that unique skill he's using. And to my surprise, they absolutely did. So the Twin Axes scale with strength, dexterity and faith, offering that lightning damage too and have a unique skill called Blink Bolt Twin Axe. And while blinking is exactly what you do when you use this unique skill, because it sees the player go from a low stance, transform into a flash of lightning, lunge in any direction they want, then when you follow up this lunge with a heavy attack, you do some crazy spinning lightning attack. I mean, I absolutely love it. So how do you get these? Well guys, you can actually get these real early on. Just up north of the castle front grace, there is the fog rift catacombs. Upon your making your way through this, you will meet the boss of the Death Knight. Yes, what a cool name. Upon you taking this guy out, he drops these weapons for you. Simple. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Moon Rift Rules Night Sword. So this is a weapon that just brought back a little nostalgia from when the game first released, which is why I've added it to this list. Now I will say that doesn't make it a bad weapon isn't in fact in the right hands this will be a monster so this is a weapon that scales with strength dexterity and intelligence it has a unique skill called tremendous phalanx and what this skill is is it spawns in three hovering swords that protect the wielder i remember a time in pvp where folks were using this spell and it was annoying as hell i hated it but yeah colossal swords ain't really my goal to but if they were this would be my goal to weapon so how do you get this? Well you need to travel into Castle Ensis uh, and make your way to that rooftop. When you first get up here guys you'll be invaded by Moon Rifle, Kurian Knight. Upon you taking this guy out, these weapons are then yours. Okay so next up guys we have the Dancing Blades of Rana. Now I've included these weapons for the pure simple fact that there's just nothing else like them. They are super super unique in what they do. You basically dance with the weapons non-stop slashing everything in your way until your FP runs out. I mean some people will think they're a little daft, I on the other hand think they are awesome. So this is a weapon that scales with dexterity alone with a unique skill called Unending Dance. That basically sums up what this thing's special unique attack is. It's crazy. So how do you get these things? Well you need to progress through the southern nameless mausoleum and take on the Dancer of Runner. Upon you defeating her, you get her weapons as well as her armour. Now if you have the Cerulean Coast West Grace unlocked, it's not too far from here. So follow this path I take on screen now, down into this secret cave which reveals where this mausoleum is hiding.
Okay, so lastly for today's video, we have the Curse Blade Surf. Now this is a weapon, one of the very first weapons you can actually get playing this DLC. It also doesn't offer any magical looking sparkly unique attacks, but it is something I believe players need to take interest in. This new backhand blade offers that deadly stance, a very unique hard hitting fast badass skill, which I do love. Now this weapon scales with strength and dexterity and causes that blood loss build up. So its unique attack sees you spinning forward in a quick motion, tearing into enemies and if you follow this up with another press of that button, you see yourself bringing down that heel to the back of someone's head. It's fast, tears into enemies and deserves more love. So how do you get this thing? Well guys, from the very first grace point you come to within the DLC, this short path right in front of you reveals an enemy who tries to surprise attack you. This is the enemy you need to farm, so kill him, if he doesn't drop the weapon for you, reload the area, rinse and repeat. Now best of luck in getting this, I have heard it's kind of rare, I on the other hand got it on my third try, I don't know, YouTuber's luck maybe, but hey. But there we have it guys, 10 amazing weapons you need to take note of, using the early game to feel super OP. Guys if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out, if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe, and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.